Hello, welcome to another tutorial by Longhorn Physics. Uh, today we want to talk about or use the law of conservation of momentum to solve a problem. Alright, so here's a practice problem. We have a big fish. I'll just draw a big fish here. Kind of a fish. He's moving at 8 kilograms and has a momentum of 8 kilograms meters per second. Okay, so how did I know that it, this wasn't the actual speed because we saw kilograms meters per second, so that's mass and that's a volume. We'll come back to that in a minute. So he's moving to the right towards a big ball of fish food. There's the fish food. And the fish food's at rest, so it has no momentum. All right. Uh, what is the total momentum of the big fish with the food in its mouth after it's swallowed the food? So afterwards, we'll have the big fish. Oh, seems to have shrunk a little bit, but there's the the food in his body, and he's going to be he's going to have a momentum before and a momentum after. So before we do the calculation, uh, we like to always go over the um, equations and the uh, units that are involved in any terminology. So let's do that now. So let's take a look at the law of conservation of momentum. Uh, basically it says that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. And so momentum is uh, calculated by m times v. And we have our initials and then this would be two objects and then after we have our final speed or velocity of the first mass added to get so this is a system where we have two objects here's some terminology feel free to uh, stop the video and take notes if you need to so uh, the units for momentum are kilograms meters per second they have no special names uh, just simply kilograms meters per second alright so um, in order to solve the problem, I always like to uh, go over a method we like to use to do these. Um, it's called the circle label method, where you read through the problem and you circle any any important information. It looks like it has units, and then you uh, match it with the symbols or variables that are needed in the equation. So let's go ahead and do that next. A big fish moving at eight kilograms meters per second. So we know that's uh, the initial momentum of object one, and then we can treat the this is the ball a fish as uh, the mass too but it's notice that it's at rest so here's our uh, momentum of the second object and then the question says what is the total momentum of the big fish or the big fish with food in its mouth after it swallows the food so that would be uh, the right side of our equation for the law of conservation of momentum notice the final and final there so next we like to uh, set things up in what I call a T-bar, where you actually write down your knowns and your unknowns, and that usually helps you with the with the algebra and the arithmetic that needs to follow. So all my knowns are the 8 kilograms for the first object, meters per second, and the momentum of object 2 is 0 because it's at rest. So it didn't matter what the mass of the, of the fish food is because, you know, anything times 0 is 0. So my unknowns is the total momentum um, after. So down here we can see the equation written in long form. So now I just, once I use my values from the t-bar and substitute, so I have 8, and I plug in 0 there, so the left side is the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum after, if you want to call this a coll collision, uh, if you want to, the, the fish uh, running and eating the food. So we have 8 is equal to m1 times v1 final plus m2 times v2 final. So this represents our total momentum of the fish moving with the food.